Hi everybody, it's Tim. Welcome back. This is part two of my garden tour, fall 2023. It's in September. So it's, I taped a lot of it yesterday, but I'm doing the intro today and it's a little cloudy here. We're getting a little bit of Hurricane Lee coming up the coast, but it's not bad. It's just a little windy here. But anyway, I wanted to start. We're doing, part two is down by the pool which is where I hang out the most. And as you can see behind me, I have two Washingtonia Robustas. The big one right here. This is my favorite favorite. It's really big. It's been in the ground, I think three or four years. The very first year I put it in the ground, I made the mistake of putting frost cloth over it and then putting the box over it. And I had a lot of mold situations and I thought uh, it's not gonna make it but uh, it did and came out just fine. And so now I really recommend do not put frost cloth over your Washingtonias if they're in a box. So don't do that. That's not a good idea. Don't recommend that at all. So anyway, uh, the other Washingtonia behind me is a little different. The first one I got from Fast Growing Trees. It, they're a great company. I've had no problems with them at all. So if you want to order from them, I highly recommend it. At least they're tropicals. That's I've gotten mostly from them. Uh, so it, it is, it's really done well. The one over here, this one here, I just replaced this year. Well, not that one, but there was one before. If you watch my old videos, that was the problem. Washingtonia Robusta that just, it had been in the yard two years, made it through two winters, but it just kept doing weird growth with its leaves. And finally this spring, it made it through the fall and uh, winter. And I was just like, you know what? It's not pretty. I'm not keeping it in here. It's just a weird experiment. It's too close to the pool. Everybody sees it. So I have this one that I grew from seed. It's doing really well. Uh, this is, I just put it in the spring. So this will be its first winter. It has grown so much just being in the ground compared to a pot. They really are, Washingtonias are like goldfish, at least the Robustas. As soon as you put them in the ground, they will take off. Or if you put them in a big gigantic pot, they really go crazy. So anyway, this is the pool garden tour. I think part three is gonna be some of the things I missed, which I've already realized, and probably a lot of the things I have in pots down by the pool and up on the deck. So. Um, Hope you enjoy this, like and subscribe, and thanks for watching. So here's a good view of this nice large guy. So happy with this thing. It's just a beautiful, beautiful plant. If you watch James Palms out of Canada, he's got a really nice big one. I don't think mine is as large as his yet, but it's getting there. I, I, the, the top fronds are probably a good eight or nine feet now. I think his is, is taller than that, but I love this one. It's just, and it's getting really, really big. You can probably just see my foot there on it. Um, I'm just gonna kind of show you my hill here. I've got some bananas and a lot of tropicals hidden up in there. This was all grass when I bought this house and now it's just a big perennial and tropical garden up there uh, looking toward the house. So here is one of my needle palms. I don't do anything with this. I don't cover it. I basically leave it alone. I've had a mixed success with these. I've bought a couple that have not made it. This one did. I bought one a couple years ago that actually had a pretty good size trunk on it and it did not even make it through the first winter. And this one I don't cover at all. It does great. I've got another one, I'll show you in a second, that the main plant died, but then it came back. Everybody was saying, that plant's dead, and I just kind of left it there, and it came, I have, seem to have a long history with things coming back here. So some plumerias, bananas on this side of the pool tend to get bigger. They're still not as big as everything up above. And this is my Sylvester date palm. It's, it's getting bigger. Um, it's got some new growth in there. I'm trying to show you. It does have a little bit of a trunk now. It's getting there, but this overwinter is really easy. I find the date palms 
do great in storage. So happy, happy with that. One of my plumerias blooming. And this is my mule palm. And it's gonna go into its second winter here. It actually got bigger this year. It doesn't look gigantic right now, but it's, I saw some video from last year and it's much, much bigger. It's got new growth on, coming up. It seems to be happy. It made it through the winter just fine. So happy about that. And then over here is my monkey puzzle, which it's got, it's got new growth on the bottom, not necessarily where I want it to be, but it does great. I don't really cover this unless it gets super, super cold. I think last year we went down to maybe zero or a little bit below zero. And I did put a some frost cloth over it just to protect it. But um, I have a box that just has frost cloth on it and I put that over it just to keep the wind damage off of it. So it did great. It did really, really well. Happy with that. Up here is my cactus garden. And there is a smaller trachycarpus back there. I think that's been in the ground two or three years now. But most of this cactus is hardy cactus. The Madagascar palm comes in. There's a couple of edible uh, fruit palm, uh, not palms, but um, cactus back there that I will bring in. Just a few, th there's an agave back there I'm gonna bring in. And then uh, the chalas back there are growing quite a bit. That agave americana needs to come in. And there's lots of weeds in here. <laughs> so uh, yeah, it you have to put on like latex gloves and weed in there because the needles are so small in this and I get them all over me and they're just a pain to get out. So it does need to be weeded. I think I'm going, to, I had this idea of letting the cactus trail down the wall, but I think I'm going to chop all these off because I need it as a walk area to get in there to weed. And I'm gonna take a lot of these cactus and let them harden off and put them in dirt. And I'm gonna create a new cactus garden below the pool on the other side over there, um, which I think will be fun. So that's an idea that's coming up. And then over on this side of the pool, I've got some citrus and pots. I've got a lemon here that will come back inside. The plumeria will come back inside. And then of course, the sad sable story. It definitely did not make it. I'm gonna pull it out. It, I don't even think it rooted because it can be moved so easily. It, it was a hurricane cut, not what I wanted. Thought it was guaranteed. I was told it was guaranteed. They stopped responding. So I am sable less, at least large sable less. I've got a couple of small sables up on the patio that I've had for a couple years, but they're very slow, slow growing. So I might actually drive to Atlanta in the spring and go to Atlanta Palms and get a sable because <laughs> I'm crazy and I really, really want one. And then just some more Brugmansias over there. So let's go over the plants on the far side of the pool or on the river side of the pool. So I've got a couple of palms over here in pots. A bottle palm bought in New Jersey. It's got some nice new growth on it here. I think I got about three new fronds this summer on it. So that's pretty good for that. This is a Cuban Royal palm I got on eBay last year. It has actually grown a lot. I'm thinking about experimenting with that in the ground. Not this year but next year and maybe covering really well with some plastic on the outside for light. I'm thinking about that. that. That is under consideration. Just a few tropicals in there. This is one of my big gigantic trachycarpus for Tunai that I got from Island Wide Palms in Long Island. I've had this one, I guess about three years now. It has grown a lot. This one's a male and it's really, really pretty. And it is quite high. I can't even reach the top anymore. So it's, it's a nice size one. I have some pineapples out here. I will bring them in, just some peppers. The sunflower there, I did not plant. I think the squirrels planted it and it looks really pretty. So I've left it, but not the 
perfect ideal place. These are uh, Musa Bastu bananas. They, right in this location down by the pool, they do not get large. Like I've got the ones up by the house that are a good 15 feet at least tall. These just tend to not get that big. I don't know if it's just the wind or the soil here or just too much in the open. They don't seem to like it as much. I've got some little things out here, some plumerias. This is an unknown palm. It uh, has actually been out here for, I think, three years. I don't really cover it in the winter at all unless it just gets really, really cold and I'll put a pot over it. It has lasted, it really has not grown very much. It might be a sable Birmingham because I ordered maybe two or three different hardy, hardy palms uh, a couple of years ago and put them in out, the, out here. And this is the only one that made it, but it seems to be fine. It's just not growing very fast at all. So um, some plumerias, some citrus that I will bring in and some more Musa Bastu. This is a blue agave that I got on Etsy. And it is, this is its second year that I've had it. It has grown so much this year. It's getting really gigantic. I do try to trim off the sharp, sharp edges on these just because I have dogs and stuff that walk by them all the time. And I, if I'm weeding, I walk by, so I kind of just take the clippers to it. But I have to dig that up and bring that in. This is another one of my big, big trachycarpus. I really thought this was a male. Uh, it had never produced seed. I've had this one for about three years. And this year, as you can see, I have seed on this one. So this is definitely a female, happy about that. I didn't get a lot this year, but I got some. So it's better than nothing. Some more citrus. These are some of my really hardy figs. I think these are Chicago um, hardy figs. They're not quite ripe yet. This kind of died back to the ground this year, but it came back and it's it's a good eight, maybe nine feet tall right now. So I'm gonna try to wrap it better. Here's some of my agave Americanas. Um, they're getting really big too. My goal is to eventually have these outside and I will cover them, but um, I'm just not ready this year to do that. I didn't even talk about my Yucca Ristrata over there. I completely forgot about it. This is my oldest Yucca Ristrata. Let's go back over here and look at it. It, I trimmed it back quite a bit it, this year. I love this, I do nothing with it. I got this from Island Wide Palms too. And um, it has grown so much since I've got it. I just, keep, I, it's actually a pretty fast grower. I'm, I'm kind of shocked how fast it grows because it is, it is well over six feet now. And this one I got maybe a year or two later, I think from Island Wide Palms and it is almost six feet right now. So it's catching up quite fast. So really happy with that. I did not mention my little baby Sago Palms that are back there. I bring them in. Those are uh, little babies that I got off the other Sago Palms that are bigger that are up by the house. And this is one of my windmills, sorry. This is one of my Washington Robustas that I grew from seed and it is doing really well. Uh, I put it out here just because I had nowhere to put it that I could cover it. And it made it through last winter just fine. This is, is going to be its second winter here, but it has grown a lot. So I'm happy with that. And that one this past winter had a couple times where the box blew over. So I've got to secure that up. Here's my oldest large palm here. I've had this one probably five years also from Island Wide Palms. It's a trachycarpus, obviously, and um, it's a male. It's doing really well. And I don't even think it's, I think they're all about pretty even and height here. They're, they're really not any difference. And if you're wondering what's in my pool there, I've got a sump pump that has, it goes out beyond this fence and goes through three boxes of to kind of a 
a makeshift sol solar heater and it really does put nice hot water back into the pool. So, and it works. And th there's plenty of YouTube uh, videos out there that tell how to do this, but um, if you have any questions about that, I'd be happy to answer. And then back behind here, if you saw my other video, is my great discovery that my pendo palm made it even though I cut it back. I thought it was so dead and I really didn't know. All summer long, apparently it was growing and I just never came back into this area because it was all just perennials and a lot of weeds and I just kind of left it alone and I had no idea it was growing. So I'm so happy because I was really, really sad if you saw my other video when that died because it just was not doing well. It never really looked good when I got it and now it has come back. So I won't be planting those cannas to hide the stump there next year like I did this year because that was the whole purpose. Put some cannas there and hide it. These are a lot of my seedlings. There's date palms. There's a few other Washingtonias. There's some Washingtonias filiferas. And um, I've got plenty of things I need to take in here. This is my big Washingtonia filifera that came from, I think, Washington State on Etsy. I can look up who it came from. I got this plant in the mail and it um, has grown a lot. So this is gonna be its first winter outside here. Everybody says it won't do well on the East Coast, but I'm making an attempt. So we will see. So I've got quite a few things to bring in here, um, but obviously, and I have a lot of baby palms up on the deck. So a lot of people ask me like, isn't this just so much work to do all this with the palm trees and everything, but I get to enjoy being in New York state and pretend I'm somewhere else when I'm at home. Cause I love living in New York and I love everything about it, but I love feeling like I'm on vacation. And when my house is surrounded by palm trees and all this stuff, I get to really enjoy it. And that's why when I'm lying here in the pool, I can look up and go, I've got palm trees around me. I've got palm trees this way. I have boats out on the water. And it's just a very, fun thing to have and work really worth all the work. At least I think so.